What's up, Vikings? Coach Vaughn. Today, I want to go into a new series, the most overrated kettlebell exercises. Now, number one, shouldn't come as a surprise to you if you followed my channel. It is the dreaded overhead slash American kettlebell swing. Why isn't this the kettlebell swing in my context? It's really a squat and pull. Uh, Pavel has taught me over the years that if you can't do it with a 48 kilo kettlebell, you probably shouldn't do it with a lighter kettlebell. And that's what people do with the overhead kettlebell swing. They use a kettlebell that basically a toddler could lift, like 10, 15 pounds. And then they have a horrible start because I'm also taught your start should look like your finish. We're gonna go into that. And what people do is they kind of start squatting into it and they pull and it just goes in all these off directions to where the point, if you do get overhead, it's gonna go all into your low back hyperextending it like so. This is why I'm using a light kettlebell. I'm not doing it with a real kettlebell. And you're just using that, all that low back. And most people don't even have that thoracic mobility to get right here. This is another thing I'm also taught. If you want to swing a kettlebell overhead, you should snatch it, as you see right here. So I can pause it. It's packed in my lat right here. I'm not shrugging into it like this, losing all this space. This is what people do with the overhead kettlebell swing, and I can bring it back down. Learning a hard style kettlebell swing isn't really that hard. A deadlift is a prerequisite for the swing, because we call the kettlebell swing a fast deadlift. And if you know how to do a plank, even better. You know how to get to the top of the kettlebell swing. So if I have the bell just a foot away from me, I can now set up that pendulum to hike above my knees. I chop at my hips, pushing my hips back. That's the difference between a squat and a hip hinge. When I squat, my hips go down with maximal flexion in both these areas. And then when I hip hinge, I have minimal knee flexion, maximal hip flexion. It's pushing toward the walls you see there. And then you want to think it's a jump that doesn't leave the floor. I have to push through my hips. I'm not slowly pulling it like this. It's not a slow movement. It's a ballistic movement. So once I find that, get that position, find that crease in my hips, I reach for the bell, I pack. And notice how it doesn't go below my knees. If it goes below my knees, I start pulling it more and I lose that pendulum, losing that arc. I keep it above my knees. I can swing it two-handed. I can swing it one-handed. I can clean. I can snatch all because my backswing looks the same. So if you can't do it, once again, with a 48 kilo, you shouldn't do it with any other belts, as you see here. So I'll shop at my hips, get this out of the way. Tilt, swing. And what you can do here is a dead stop swing to enforce that looking like your start, like your finish. So I bring it down each rep. That's why you don't want to do a overhead kettlebell swing. So like I said, know your hip hinge. If you want to swing it overhead, snatch it and make sure you own your foundations if you decide to go heavier with your bells. Now, if you'd like more tips with kettlebells, be sure to check out my book, The Kettlebell Weights. Features how to do swings, squats, cleans, snatches, get-ups, all in detail, all in one source. You can find it on Amazon.com. This is Coach Vaughn signing off. Hope you have fun with that.